this is our luminary lift up. If you recall, last year we did more uh, lunch and learn style, and this year we decided we wanted to really broaden and open up those that are able to join us in this conversation around great prevention work that's happening across the state that we want to lift up and share with our partners and our donors and our supporters. So uh, first, just a quick thank you to our luminaries. Luminaries are monthly donors to Illuminate that help us to make sure we've got the capacity to keep providing these great services and coordinating this work all year long. So thank you to all of our luminaries. And if you'd like to learn more about that, there's much, there's a ton of information available on our website. Um, with that, let's introduce our panelists today for this conversation we're going to be having. So joining me is Dave, Yvette, Lara, and Minna. And so I will just turn it over to each of you for just a quick thing, a quick intro. And Minna, we'll start with you. Good morning, my name is Minna Castillo-Cohen, and I'm the Director of the Office of Children, Youth, and Families at the Colorado Department of Human Services. Thanks, Minna. Let's go to Lara. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lara Bruce, and I am the uh, Project Director for the Colorado Child Welfare Scholars Consortium, uh, what used to be the Child Welfare Stipend Program. We are housed at MSU Denver in the Social Work Department, and I'm excited to be with you all today. Thanks, Lara. I swear I practiced your name and still did it wrong. I'm sorry. I will. That is okay. <laughs> no worries. Uh, Dave. Good morning, everybody. I'm Dave. I'm a parent. I'm heavily involved in community organizations to help uplift parents and children and uh, make everybody feel happy. Thanks, Dave and Yvette. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for allowing Arapahoe County to be a part of the panel this morning. My name is Yvette Yan. I support the Department of, Com the Department of Human Services um, as a commu communications business partner, and um, it's nice to see everybody. And then finally, Katie. Hi, I'm Katie Fashionello. I'm the communications director at Illuminate Colorado and have been heavily involved with many, many partners and our staff in putting together a next month's awareness campaign. So, so happy to talk about this today. All right, so in a minute, we'll get into all things Child Abuse Prevention Month. You can see some of the photos on this slide, uh, but first we wanted to start a little bit lighter and just talk a little bit about positive thinking, really uh, demonstrating for us protective factors and stress management and parental resilience as a protective factor. And so panelists, thank you for, for joining us and agreeing to have this kind of light conversation around what is positive thinking and how does this impact how we show up. Um, and then in a few minutes, we'll transition over and really share more about um, uh, the Child Abuse Prevention Month campaign launching April 1st, and then kind of how we can do more of these uh, little chats. So um, I will start and share. This morning I reread this article. Um, so it's the the let's talk positive thinking and stop negative self talk. And as I, I walked downstairs after and I saw this coffee cup, which is awkward is my specialty, is what it says. And I was like, well, that seems fitting for today. It's actually um, my teenager's coffee cup, but I steal it regularly because I feel like it really. Um, highlights for me an opportunity to shift. So I have found that, you know, in my, professionally, I feel like I'm really good at the positive thinking, at seeing the opportunities, at really, you know, reframing and moving forward as an organization and with, you know, everyone at Illuminate on that, on that positive lens. But I do find myself, you know, individually as a, as a mom, you know, it's easy to kind of get down on yourself. And so for me personally, my big, my biggest challenge is dinner. Like, we have to make dinner every night. Like we have to feed these children multiple times a day. And for me, I find myself like at 5.30 being like, oh no, I don't have dinner. And it's so easy to like hear that negative self-talk, to hear that like, um, gosh, I'm such a terrible mom. Gosh, I can't believe I didn't go to the grocery store. Gosh, I can't believe that I didn't like, it's easy to just have that negative thought peek right in. And so for me, it's really this idea of like, shifting that and being, you know, being able to remind myself as a mom, like I'm doing everything I can. And, you know, so when I saw this mug this morning, that, you know, awkward is my specialty, like it reminded me, like, we have to take the things that we aren't 
always so great at or that sometimes are hard and just figure out how to shift those and use that really not the negative thinking, but shift it into more like positive. What can I do? What is my specialty? Like I do feed them every day. It's not always great, but I figure it out every day. Um, and so that was just what came up for me as I read this article. I don't know, Katie, Dave, anyone else kind of want to share what came up for them? Yeah, I mean, I could look at this article in with so many different lenses, right? And as I was thinking about, like, I am so hard on myself as a parent. And I know if my friends, family, neighbors, I know they wouldn't say those things about me that I say to myself. Um, and I, I was thinking about, so I'm uh, a mom of uh, cutie little kids that you'll see in all of our stock photos that are now uh, four and six. But I was thinking back to when I first had um, Jack, our oldest, six years ago. And I, I wouldn't, I, it was so prevalent in my mind and I wouldn't ask for help. I wouldn't admit that like just the tiniest little thing to say, like, could you wake up with him? Could you get dinner? I was trying to be so perfect. Um, and I didn't realize I was doing it, but that is like, I want to read this article every morning because I'm still doing it too much. Um, it, it really does feel like something I need to practice all the time. Um, I love the so for those of you that are watching, we copied over um, some of the bullet points that are in the article, um, ways to focus on positive thinking and you know, ways to identify if you are negative thinking. I am very much a glass half empty kind of person. <laughs> I'm super negative and I'm trying really hard not to impart these things on my kiddos. Um, but I can definitely see I'm still doing it today. And I remember those early days and I was definitely doing it then. Practice. <laughs> hey, I'll jump in real quick if, I, if that's okay. Great. I've learned a lot of tools in the last year. Um, so I, I never used to be so positive thinking as I have been now. So in the past, it was equal proportions. So this is negative thoughts and positive thoughts in proportion. And now it's positive thoughts and negative thoughts. And I took some training. I have a lot of tips and tricks. I work with my son a lot. He's nine years old. Uh, what patience, gratitude. We do meditation together, um, cooperation with others. And um, I teach him every week, love and kindness. So those are kind of the things that I do as a parent, and I also chill, I teach my, my child as well. I wanna give a huge shout out to Saddle Ranch uh, Elementary, Jack's, Jack and Isabella School, because they have been hitting it hard on social emotional learning for the last two years. And I have been learning right alongside with them, all of these things uh, that have been keeping us strong. Um, huge thanks to school systems who are teaching these uh, skills that I don't remember learning things like this as a kid. Well, I can jump in and um, it's awesome to hear all these strategies. And um, when I was reviewing this article this week, it made me think of lots of things. I agree, like looking through different lenses in my life. Um, I um, have always seen myself as a really optimistic person, sometimes on the verge of naivete a little bit, um, <laughs> being so optimistic. And then um, my husband and I went down the road of infertility um, for a while, and um, we are now um, expecting our first child in June. And um, so that process shifted a lot of my thinking. Um, around just the negative self-talk. I, early on in this pregnancy, that first trimester was really, really hard um, to just think everything was gonna go wrong and everything that I did was gonna go wrong. And it really, um, it really took a lot of that self-talk to turn my perspective around um, to be able to say, I don't have any data that supports that everything's gonna go wrong. And, 
a lot of that I, I attribute to having a really strong partner and a really um, strong support system and folks around me. But I think in thinking about this article, a lot of that um, flip for me was around being able to say how I was feeling um, out loud to the people that I uh, love and care about and have them reflect what I was saying and, and um, also be able to, to uh, jump in and calm some of that anxiety and those nerves early on in this process. And um, so this article was totally like on point for all the phases of this pregnancy that I've been going through and what it's taken to really like shift my mindset to lower my anxiety, lower my stress, and ultimately have a really healthy and so far, knock on wood, successful <laughs> pregnancy. Um, so it's this was really um, important and I, I would totally encourage folks to really, it's a lot of work. It's, it's definitely all the strategies that they propose are a lot of work, um, but, um, but it's worth it to have that decreasing stress and anxiety around you know, being a parent or raising a child or whatever that looks like, which we're not even there yet, but <laughs> when the time comes. Oh, thank you so much for sharing and congratulations. Thanks. I know that's a difficult journey. Yeah. Anyone else want to share? I might just jump in with a, a real quick um, thought as I was reading this. So my children are 21 and 17. And so last night I attended my very last parent-teacher conference. And I was telling my child, like, this is wonderful and really sad at the same time. I'm like 12 years, you go up to parent-teacher conferences and, and love them. And um, so recognizing that I'm entering a different stage here. But but also, I, I think along the way, as I hear Katie talk about having littles and, and, and then having bigs, I think as kids, that... Um, we have to give ourselves grace because there are no perfect parents and there are no perfect children, but we have really wonderful, perfect moments along the way. And I think that's what we have to hold on to. Um, and I had seen that written somewhere, probably on some sort of craft sign or in some sort of fair, but I thought that is perfect um, for us to remember is that we, we can't be perfect and our kids can't be perfect. And if we don't model that it's okay not to be great all the time, but really how you make efforts to do so. Then I don't think we're being real with our kids. And um, Katie may have seen, I, I have a bumper sticker on the back of my car that my kid, uh, my 21 year old gave me, and I won't quote it directly because it does have a curse word in it, but um, essentially it says, um, proud parents of, uh, of a child who is sometimes a jerk, but that's okay. And I think it's sort of in line with some of those proud parents of a kid who's like a perfect honor roll kid. And it's okay not to be perfect. And the fact that my kid gave that to me, and I proudly put it on my car and I get more notes on my car windshield from people saying, I love your bumper sticker, or I'll see people taking pictures of it. And uh, I think it's just a great thing. I'm proud of my kid, no matter what. Um, and and I want my kids to know that, both of my kids to know that. Uh, and so I think it goes along with, there's no perfect parents perfect moments along the way, and we just hold on to those. That's beautiful. All right, well, I think that's a, a great place to transition um, just with that really positive kind of message and, and quote that I know is gonna stick in, stick in my head for sure. Um, so with that, I think let's transition and start to think about Child Abuse Prevention Month. Um, so it's it's really important to talk about all of these things, and it's really important that we are really making the connection between what we've been talking about this morning, which truly is resilience and protective factors, and how we can really uh, connect that with, with Child Abuse Prevention Month and with what we want for all families in Colorado to have and to have access to what they need to build and learn all of these skills that we've been discussing this morning. So in January, we always encourage our elected officials and partners who are passionate about strengthening families to get involved and to join in the planning for Child Abuse Prevention Month, which is in April. This January, we had more than 100 people sign up to get involved. And from that, many of our first partnerships have been formed this year. And so you see here, we've done this for many, many years in person um, at, at the Capitol with our pinwheels. And we're so excited to be back this year. Um, we've had a, a couple of years where we definitely did our best with uh, 
Zoom and virtual and recorded things, but it is just nothing like the energy that we get when we're all together at the Capitol. And so this year on April 1st, we'll be there together. And um, I think all of us that are on this, uh, that are panelists here will be there together. And so I can't wait to see you all in person. Um, so Katie, maybe I'll turn it over to you to just overview what's planned for April. Yeah, so um, as you can see, we have been doing this for many years, more than 10 years. Um, so Illuminate Colorado um, is a, a several organizations got together many years ago, one of which was Prevent Child Abuse Colorado. Um, and so our work together with partners dates back many, many years. Um, and so every year, of course, we partner with Prevent Child Abuse America as the Colorado chapter and uh, distribute materials, uh, customized materials with you know, partners who are helping us plan activities and distribute pinwheels, of course. So if you, you remember from last year, um, we had uh, 40,000 pinwheels. That's because of uh, not being able to do stuff early in the pandemic and left over from previous years. We had them everywhere, so we got rid of them um, and wanted to do everything we could in the pandemic to, to really you know, inspire people to get involved and, and talk about this stuff. Um, so this year we can't give away 40,000, but we can do a lot of other things together. Um, and we are planning to give away 10 free pinwheels to anybody in Colorado that you know orders online. Um, and takes our pledge, which I'll talk more about. So um, working together with partners, we have put together lots of ideas and uh, listen to other people on uh, what they have planned um, and uh, you know, compiled this in a community uh, activity guide. Um, thanks so much to um, partners, for giving us ideas and helping us to put together this um, guide. One of the important things that we do, you know, during April is help people identify protective factors, help people make that connection because the conversation that we just had made total sense to me that that's, that's parental resilience. That's one of the five protective factors. And when my neighbors help me, you know, during a crisis, which I very recently went through, that's protective factors. If I didn't have them in my life, I wouldn't have been able to stay as strong and quite honestly, have been in real, real stress and not the parent that I wanted to be showing up for my kids. And so that's a part of all of the things that we try to talk about um, during child, child abuse prevention Awareness Month. We want to help people recognize these things around us that in reality, in our day to day, they're little tiny things that alleviate stress for parents. And depending on the challenges that you're going through, you may be really, really overwhelmed. You may be really, really, uh, you know, facing a significant challenge um, like substance use disorder or un unemployment or isolation as we've you know, recently gone through, we all now have a very real understanding of what kind of parent we show up for our kids um, during high stress. I think every single parent can say that. So that's a part of our key messages. And we're asking people to pledge uh, to grow a better tomorrow. Um, so we have key messages. We also have language to help talk about each protective factor um, to parents. Uh, in this cute flyer um, that we have available for download. Also, pulling together so many ideas of ways that we can engage our friends, family, and neighbors. As I said, we're giving away 10 free um, pinwheels to anybody, and we're reserving uh, at least 5,000 of our current stock to make sure that we have those available in April because um, Jade will uh, share some exciting news here in a second about um, something that uh, uh, one of our sponsors is helping us uh, do this year. Um, but you know, we want people to take the pinwheels, give them out to your neighbors, do a pinwheel parade. 
that's one of the cute ways that child care um, providers, I think it's uh, Clayton Early Learning, I've always seen them online. If you follow the hashtag uh, Growing Better Together, you'll see this is just a few of the laundry list ways people have come up to use these things and you know, made it their own. So we've compiled the list of all those fun things, photo contest, everything uh, under the sun. And all of this we will launch on April 1st at the Capitol. So we'd love to have people join us in person if you're in the Denver Metro uh, area and willing to come down. It's been two years since we have seen each other in person. Uh, many of us have been doing this for many years. That's actually my kid that in the upper left-hand corner that is now six years old. And that's Jade's little one who, it's not the one that just got a license, but it's, she's well on her way. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, and then finally, what's new and different this year is that uh, thanks to the Colorado Child Welfare Scholars Consortium, we have the opportunity of uh, giving away a mini grant of $2,500 to uh, th through a, a drawing at the end of the month. So if people get heavily involved, uh, you can earn more point entry points. Um, and but you're still entered to win if you you know just take the pledge to do one of the you know, 50 ways little tiny things to big things, organizing your neighborhood or community. Um, we'll be pushing these ideas out all month long. These are just that glimpse, sort of pre uh, look for what we'll be announcing on April 1st uh, at the Capitol, um, but we're very excited. Um, one of the, the focal points, uh, the last thing I'll kind of share um, is, that we really want to focus on, you know, there's five protector factors, and that's quite a lot to talk about. We have an entire month to talk about that. So at the April 1st event, we're really going to talk about concrete supports. The organizations, many of our campaign partners, they have been showing up in a huge way for families throughout this pandemic. And so I think that's the main focal point. Um, of that, uh, you know, first event to launch the campaign to grow a better tomorrow for all children together, together. Um, but we also want people to spend a little bit more time getting to know the community resources in their neighborhoods. So one of the activities that you'll see here is to you know, create a family emergency preparedness plan. We're putting together a template that, uh, you know, folks can fill out and think about those challenges. As I said, my family just went through a, you know, a medical emergency that took me out of work for two weeks and I, I needed to go to the grocery store. I needed all of these things. I was flying solo as a parent. And if I didn't have reserves in the bank, that would have completely caused um, chaos in my life. Thankfully, I didn't need to look for those community resources at that point but it was very, very close to that point. Um, and it's never a good time to put together an emergency plan when you're in a crisis. So think about what you would do if somebody in your family was facing a domestic violence uh, relationship. You were trying to help a friend that was going through something like that. Try to think through those extreme challenges that we hope we never face. But as we know, there's far too many overdoses in Colorado. Many of our families have family members that are suffering and, and struggling through substance use disorders. So these are the community resources that we all need to be aware of so we can help each other. Um, so get to know your community. That, that will be one of the asks. It's certainly time intense, a little bit more time intensive. So we want to give some greater points to that effort. Um, and Laura will talk a little bit about um, that in a moment. But so that's just a high level overview of some of the things that we have planned, but we're very excited. Great. Thank you so much, Katie. 
And huge thank you to all of our partners that have been involved in this, the Colorado Department of Human Services, um, and, and everyone else that you'll hear about. Uh, one of the things that Katie was previewing is we do have a uh, presenting sponsor this year, Safe Care Colorado, through the Colorado Office of Early Childhood, that is helping us to be able to run a month-long advertising campaign, really focused on all of these protective factors as well. So that's new news. We just uh, just found out about that this week, and so we're going to be running both English and Spanish ads on TV and radio, and then we also have um, donated um, advertising through Colorado Parent Magazine this year as well. So uh, Minna, I know this is really a, a lot of information. Share, why do you think it's important for partners to be involved in this effort? Thanks so much, Jade. You know, I, as I've come into this role at CEHS, um, the pinwheel event was on my radar from previous work I had done with a nonprofit organization, as well as uh, some work I had done in the early childhood community. And so I always thought of it as such a wonderful way to be able to um, really highlight the, the whole of the community and everybody's role in playing to help strengthen families. I think what Katie was talking about is this parental resilience. It is that network of people that you can lean on. And we all have different networks. I think about, uh, again, going back to early parenting days, who I would call on, who also had small kids who maybe were a little um, older than my own kids so that I could ask for some help. And I think that as we are looking at bringing people um, it's sort of this message of it takes all of us. It, it is a shared uh, responsibility to raise up our kids and leave, uh, you know, uh, space for all of us to have grace and recognize that uh, we need help every once in a while, that this Pinwheels um, and, and CAPM month really is a way for everybody to get involved. So I would just um, really hope that um, people get, people who are listening, put out the pinwheels in their yards. Um, are encouraging their elementary schools, are encouraging the businesses in their own communities to get involved and recognize strong, strong employees, um, because they're, you know, who may have families are, are even stronger when they have support that work. And, uh, and so what we want to do really is make sure that people recognize the benefit of leaning on one another here. And, you know, within the Office of Children, Youth and Families, we do have um, a variety of different program areas that I won't go into, but we are um, always looking at and sharing the message of most of the calls that come into the hotline are really around parents' lack of resources. And so one of the ways that we can really support families is making sure that we are connecting them to those resources. Um, and it is really those concrete supports that, that families need. Early childhood education really does help create a stronger workforce. It does make sure that kids are connected to those high quality early care and education uh, environments that we know lead them into positive um, results in third grade and then keep them out of my juvenile justice system that um, we have here in Colorado. Like early childhood education is a key protective factor um, for preventing uh, that juvenile justice. Um, so I, I would say I'm very excited by the campaign always because it gives us a great opportunity to be able to sort of work outside of our child protection system and, and really talk about human uh, services. And instead of just child welfare, thinking about child well-being and how we ensure that all kids have all of the things that they need, uh, which means that families have to have all of the things that they need so that we are preventing child abuse and neglect from ever happening. Uh, and I think highlighting those protective factors is really important um, here. Thank you, Minna. I, I love that. I think, you know, continuing to remind that it is uh, so much more than any one system or any one sector or any one kind of organization's role that truly to strengthen families to create child and family well-being it's all of our, our state partners our human service partners our public health our counties um, it's just really we have to think as broadly as possible around community and what does community mean and how do we help families find community so um, with that uh, Lara, I, I know that um, some folks that are joining us today may not be aware of the Colorado Child Welfare Scholars Consortium and the work that you all have been doing. So uh, thank you for joining us as a partner and a sponsor on this. Would you share a little bit about the consortium and how you're trying to leverage this year's campaign to bring students in? Sure. Um, so Katie, am I able to share my, oh, perfect. Right on you. Um, 
<laughs> we like to share this visual um, because we are getting the message out that the Colorado Child Welfare Scholars Consortium really started um, in July of, of 2021, but the, the Child Welfare Stipend Program has been around Colorado since 1995. Um, and we just shifted our model this year um, to be able to leverage some additional resources for the program. Um, and that's when MSU Denver and our Department of Social Work uh, really became the central university hub for this program. But we really partner with all of the schools of social work in Colorado, the ones that are on the table here um, and, and, um, and are hoping to bring some others to the table in the coming years um, to support social work students, both at the undergraduate level and the graduate level um, with um, knowledge and experience in, in public child welfare in, throughout our state. Um, and so we partner with the Department of Human Services to offer scholarships to students who are um, interested in child welfare or who are already working in the field of child welfare and want to go back to school to get a master's degree. Um, and then we support them through an internship um, and, and then um, post-graduation employment and ongoing kind of professional development. Um, our ultimate goal is really to support children and families through um, social work education. We know that um, families that have a social worker when um, in the child welfare system are often, um, often have better outcomes than when they work with folks from other disciplines. And really that's because of the skill development that they gain in the social work program through engagement with families, really looking at the whole family and what their needs are and being able to assess families um, needs, whether that's you know small or large, um, and really looking at those other community supports and those other um, communities that, that families are already in, involved with, right? That they already have support from and how do we leverage those um, at, from a child welfare perspective as well. Um, and then I think the next um, visual just kind of deepens the um, information that we have available. I don't know, Katie, if you can swap the, the slide there for a second, but we just really wanted to highlight um, that we serve students and workers all over the state. Um, our um, students live and work in, in most of our 64 counties. Um, and so we're constantly looking for other folks to partner with in this program to support students and then our graduates as they enter the child welfare field. And as far as um, how we, um, we're really excited about this partnership with Illuminate. We're excited to be sponsors of this year's um, campaign. We are um, going to be reaching out to all of our partnering universities to encourage students to attend the event um, in April. Um, not just our scholars, but we also have the opportunity to be in classrooms with students who may be less familiar with the protective factors and with um, other, you know, strengthening families kinds of ideas and, and concepts. So we're constantly trying to infuse that knowledge so that, you know, students are learning um, more about how we as a community support families before they enter the child welfare system and what that really looks like and, and what it really looks like to lead from a strengths-based perspective, right? And what it really means to, um, to, to hone in on what are the existing strengths within families. You all talked about that earlier about, you know, it's really awesome when you can put a meal on the table every night for, you know, <laughs> every day of the week. Um, and that's a definitely a strength for um, lots of families that we as social workers can really highlight for families who are struggling. Um, some of those little things make a big difference. So we're excited to participate in, in the campaign that way. All month long, we're gonna be encouraging our students to um, take part in all the activities um, that Illuminate has put together, including um, the family emergency preparedness plan and talking a little bit about that whole idea of, you know, make a plan before you're in crisis, help your family and community make plans um, before they're in crisis to, to help support them when those, when those experiences present themselves. Um, there's a great training that we're encouraging our students to take, bridging, or bringing protective factors to life in your work training um, that is focused on the five protective factors. Um, so we'll be out and about and around and encouraging our students to really um, actively participate whenever and wherever possible throughout the month. Thanks, Lara. Uh, Dave, 
I know you're newer to this. You're uh, just kind of joining us this first year and that you're planning to be a part of the April 1st event. Can you, you know, hearing what you've heard and hearing kind of the conversation thus far, why do you think it's important for parents and caregivers to share their lived experiences? Great question. And thank you so much for inviting me. It's, um, well, first, let me say I'm compassionate about sharing my education, my, uh, my path to where I am and raising my son. It's, uh, it's extremely important, extremely, that we all connect together and share the information that we have. Um, I love the, the panelists and how much information that they can share with others. It's connecting that with parents. There are so many hands reaching out in Colorado. It's just where do parents go? What types of services that they need? And how do they get the best help? So I love, 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 love this program. Um, and I just want to be a part of it as much as I can. Thanks so much, Dave. I really appreciate um, your perspective. Uh, Yvette, thinking about what you all have been doing for years and years, how we're coming back together and how you in your community are really reaching out to, to families and to your community members. What's that look like for Arapahoe County this year? Well, so we have had some um, major changes in the way we do business since COVID. And it's been um, challenging in many ways. I, I think all of us as parents, as social workers, as you know, navigators and just supporters of families and building thriving communities can all relate to some of the challenges that we have faced. And for us as a local government entity, we have folks on the front line seeing some of these issues and seeing the barriers and the challenges. And my goodness, I am learning so much here today, but also I would love to share that for us, it's about prevention and getting in the front end of things. So when you mention and talk about protective factors, it's a big communication component to our social workers this year as how we connect with our families a little bit better and maybe a little bit differently. Um, we have a network of very highly skilled um, workers who know exactly you know, um, how to see families and how, you know, finding different and creative and innovative ways to support families through all of the changes. Um, but I think this year, our focus is, you know, just kind of providing the support to parents and families and, and um, allowing them to know that we are on their side. And for us to then support families in, in, in a way, in many ways, we are then preventing child abuse and neglect. And we are trying to find ways to not so much be, um, <clears throat> you know, say, you know, this is what you have to do. We're gonna tell you what you need to do, but instead we're changing the narrative and, and saying, how can we support families reach their goals? How do we better support you? Because I think, you know, we recognize that every family is unique. Um, and so, um, Jade, if you want me to kind of share at this time kind of what we're doing with the pinwheels and all of that wonderful things, um, every, every year, uh, Arapahoe County uh, shows our support for this very important observance by displaying and planting pinwheel gardens in front of our human services building on um, Alameda and 225. We also um, put out big banners and, and display uh, a big pinwheel garden um, in front of our main you know, administrative building in Littleton. And then we have you know, partnerships with the sheriff's office and we have uh, partnerships with other, uh, like the clerk and recorder's office and other departments who, who just um, love displaying pinwheels. And then you know, for human services, um, it's just building awareness by providing um, information about our services and programs that support the preventative work that we do, and then allowing families to then on their way out, pluck one of those pinwheels and take it home with them as a reminder that we are there 
for them and we are on their side. So that's kind of a thing that we're doing kind of actively. And we love to get our social workers out there planting pinwheels at the beginning of the month. And then throughout the month, we kind of see how many pinwheels get plucked. Um, we're also um, sharing a lot through our social media pages this, this month, well, this next month. Um, and we're teeing up to April by really acknowledging that March is Social Work Appreciation Month with March 15th being Social Work Appreciation Day. So we're hitting it um, internally and externally, making sure that you know, our social workers are supported and recognized as well. I think you know it's no secret that a lot of um, folks, a lot of businesses and organizations are trying to find um, workers and human services were no exception and we we are constantly looking for people who would want to enter the social work industry and it's very rewarding but it's also very challenging so i think one of our one of our important strategies is um acknowledging the important work that our caseworkers have and do on a daily basis and kind of using that to tee up to april Yvette, I hope you that helps. do yeah. so much. And Arapahoe County is so engaged in, in supporting their families. I think that's the best part about my job is that like we get to connect with so many parts of, mm -hmm. of communities. Like your early childhood council has been showing up in these planning calls from, from January to now and you know offering these great ideas. Uh, that we put together in the, the campaign guide, mm -hmm. scavenger hunt, it, they're very much like ready and waiting to connect, you know, families with littles to other resources. Um, I think that's the hardest part about parenting is like, you don't know what you need until you need it. If you're a first time parent, um, I, I did not study early childhood. I, I have learned uh, about this topic from all of you. And even still, um, I had no idea what I was in for. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> needed my early childhood counsel uh, for ideas and like, oh my gosh, you got to fill so much time with uh, battle talk. And there's only so many ways I can uh, do things. <laughs> I love, uh, love the early childhood counsel there. Uh, I appreciate that, Katie. And it's so important to build that social network for our families and support that. Um, one, one thing that we constantly get feedback on is, you know, our families uh, needing, especially with the pandemic, needing a supportive group around them, needing people to rally around families. That goes a long way and makes such a positive impact if we could get our social connections right for our families. So we have workshops and different services to kind of enhance that. But you're right, like as parents, I'm a parent of littles, of course, and you know that. And um, it, without the camaraderie and the support for one another, it's hard to get ahead. And, you know, the human services we, we offer things, we offer resources, but we cannot do the job alone of preventing child abuse and neglect, right? It's a community work, it's a system, it's a network. And as we connect, I see that families are in need of connection as well. So um, yeah, kudos to you for, for doing all the work that you do. It's, that's amazing. Thanks, Yvette. So looking at the time, we're getting close to the end. I think um, as we start to think about wrapping up, I'm wondering if anyone has kind of closing comments or closing thoughts that they'd like to share before we before we wrap up. I'll, I'll um, just say something again. I think we've just had great conversation here around supporting families and parents and parental resilience and thinking but um, we all are, are hearing from each other and we need to continue to express this message out that when parents have the, the network of people around them, the knowledge, the skills and the resources that they can protect their child from risk, whether that risk is in community or even within their own home. And certainly through the pandemic, we have seen those um, real stress factors for families, uh, work, 
and school that was online. And now we're trying to go back into quote normal uh, activities going back to work and um, rejuggling what that looks like. And so thinking about how we manage and cope with all of those stressors and really lean on our networks um, of, of community members, friends, family, neighbors, to be able to uh, help us get through that will ultimately strengthen those families, strengthen those bonds between parents, uh, caregivers, and their children, and really um, helping our community strengthen that parental resilience all around, thus making um, it easier for us to prevent child abuse and neglect as a community. I could jump in real quick. We have a strong group this morning, and to me, it's just the tip of the iceberg. There's so many other resources out there. There's such a support structure for parents and how to help each other and community organizations. It's just reaching the parents that need help. And there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. I've been through it myself, and I reached out to community organizations for that help. And it just made me a better parent. And I love to share that with others. Thanks, Dave. And I know at our um, event together in April, you're gonna share a little bit more about your journey. I think as I, I hear what you just shared and really what comes next, I think this idea of how are we really um, engaging and, and letting families lead because I think that's the other part of this is, you know, as a, as a community, as a, as a system, we can create the pathways, but really we need, we need to hear families. We need families to have the opportunity to share what they need and what works for them and to really be able to be supportive and responsive. And so I'm really excited about hearing from more families this year and hearing about their journeys and their needs and where the system is working and where it's not and how we can be advocates and champions for change. Um, so with that, Katie, I think I'll, I'll turn it over to you for any last kind of closing comments. Yeah, I think we need more people, right? We have tons of campaign partners and more and more every day, um, hoping that, you know, the, the list of logos on this website that we're sharing is, goes on for days. I think we all play a part, even private, you know, private businesses, individual childcare centers, let us see you, let us know that you care about the work that we're doing every day as well. Um, we still have, you know, opportunities to become a sponsor. So thankful to our um, presenting sponsors uh, at Safe Care Colorado and Colorado Department of Human Services and our fellow organizers um, and Prevent Child Abuse America for giving this, you know, beautiful, creative campaign and messaging and helping us. This is happening all over the country. Growing better together for all children is a national movement. And we're the Colorado chapter connecting with our state and local organizations to, to share a louder, you know, sing a louder song, have a shared message throughout this month. So we really hope that we reach more people and, you know, engage with our neighbors. You know, my, my friends and family get a pinwheel on their doorstep Every year, we have a little card that goes out with every individual pinwheel um, that folks can, you know, do what you will. Write a thank you note uh, to somebody who's kept you strong. There are lots of little tiny things that we can do that we'll talk about on April 1st. And so I hope everyone joins us, um, you know, in person or virtually. We'll be, you know, sharing live on, on Facebook. Um, and hoping people connect with us that way as well. Um, and, you know, don't forget to wear blue. It's National Wear Blue Day. Everybody wears blue to promote positive childhood experiences. That's something that every Coloradan should be getting behind. We all, we can all do that. I think in this day and age, we have a, a hard time seeing the commonality, but, you know, this message, the fact that every day, you know, we help children and families thrive. That's something that we can all agree on. And, and that's what we need to do on, on April 1st. So I hope everyone joins us. You know, if uh, you have 
not planned a ton. Clearly, we have everything to, you know, download that toolkit. Uh, easy ways to organize your your um, your efforts locally. And if you have found the time to get organized, promote what you're doing through this bigger effort. You know, let us help you um, sing that louder song and lift each other up. So we're excited about having TV and, and radio public service announcements for the first time. And thank you to the Colorado Parent Magazine who's donating more than $4,000 uh, in advertising to help us connect directly with parents. It's a great resource all year long as are all the organizations that are you know, campaign partners. So um, I'm sure that I forgot something but um, hopefully we have uh, everything online. And then um, you know, I look forward to hearing uh, you know, Minna and Dave are both gonna join us at the Capitol and uh, share some of you know, their remarks and, and a little bit more stories about why this work is important. We're inviting all of our legislators. And so if you're passionate about that and you wanna go talk to your elected officials, please join us. Uh, on, a, on April 1st and hand them a pinwheel. Tell them what it represents and remind them that you care. Um, so, yeah. Katie, we have a question in the Q&A yeah. box. Oh. Um, should we hold off on using the growing, together, growing Better Together hashtag until April? No, that's okay. If you are ready, you go ahead. Creates, creates a buzz. You, we have a lot of people, it's other states are, we're in the process of refreshing the website. Um, so that sort of points giveaway um, that we've been talking about, we're in the process of getting that up there live, but you can see on the website today, we're taking RSVPs, we're kind of getting the buzz out there. So um, yeah, help us. If you're proud and you're ready to share out materials, we will give you all the, uh, the graphics that you see behind me, drop your logo on it, uh, make it your own. This is, uh, you know, Keep, keep it positive because we know that that helps, you know, welcome people to the conversation. Um, you know, to posit, toxic positivity is a thing. Uh, you'll see that described in the, the campaign guide, but I think it's okay to start the conversation very, very positive because it welcomes people in. Um, but remember what we're talking about. Be prepared to answer, you know, answer questions about the entire continuum of um, child abuse prevention from upstream to the folks that are intervening within the child welfare system and you know, helping kids that have um, been, you know, unfortunately experienced, you know, trauma. Be prepared to advocate for your community partners is, is what I would say. So if you're not ready to talk about those things, reach out to us. We're happy to give you more talking points on you know, um, the entire spectrum of uh, prevention, uh, but, but yeah, make it your own. I think that's a, a beautiful place to close. Um, one of the things I saw in that article this morning when I reread it was that reminder that Positive thinking doesn't mean that we um, forget or gloss over or pretend that negative things don't happen. It's instead that we think about how do we approach this however we can with a, with a problem solving or a solution focused or a positive mindset that is, you know, we, we listen, we learn, we grow and we change. And I am excited to be back with you all in person. I'm excited to see you in April and to really start to continue um, or continue the, the transformation that we're making in our state and that we're hoping all families um, have opportunities to thrive. So I can't wait to see you there. Thank you all so much. And uh, almost April. Thanks everybody for joining us today.